So this is the operation screen on the ASM 200, and we're just going to cover uh, the buttons that are that are on this. So under your device tree here, you'll see that uh, you have all of your different recorders uh, that you have attached to the system. Now it's important to remember that whatever passwords you've been assigned can make uh, some of these recorders disappear or appear along with the other things on the screen. So I'm logged in as the admin right now. And uh, as we look across here, we see uh, old DVRs from Panasonic 10 years ago all the way to newer uh, uh, NVRs that are all on the same platform running across. So at this point, I can highlight any square on the screen, and then I can grab any camera and put it in that square. Now you'll notice it pulled it from this one square over to here. The ASM 200 does this to limit uh, bandwidth. It doesn't let you duplicate the same camera in front of you so that you're not over pulling on bandwidth. But you can pull across uh, multiple recorders onto your screen and put those where it is that you want them to go. So uh, this copy here I've taken so that it can see 16 screens. Uh, we are uh, able to go all the way up to 64 screens on uh, one PC. So uh, that is governed by up top. You can tell it how many screens you would like, uh, how many cells you want up on at any time. And then of course you can select your cameras that you want and throw them into that screen. So that's your device tree and operating how you work uh, the actual uh, squares off to the side. Now these groups are uh, set up in the setup and they basically bring up a predetermined uh, cell and the cameras that you want associated with them across your whole entire system. So you just click on these groups and then those pop up for you. Sequence uh, will let you sequence through those groups. Uh, if you hit start, you'll notice it will throw it to full screen. And then these are just some of the preset sequences that I put in. You can see I'm jumping from old analog cameras to new uh, IP cameras uh, at five seconds. And then do a right click and that will exit you uh, back out of this area here. So quick playback is playing back uh, what you have on your recorder for either a camera or a group of cameras. So let me, uh, let me go to this here because mine are on motion and start up just some manual recording here. And what we'll do is I'll show you this quick playback off of a pan tilt zoom so we can see it moving. So I've called up this square, uh, grabbed the pan tilt zoom camera. Now if I bring this camera full screen, it gives me the ability to do the drag and zoom. So anywhere I drag a square, my pan tilt zoom will go to that spot, and then I can center that with a with just a simple click. Wherever I click once, it'll center that to the middle, and I can dynamically draw squares anywhere I want. And it'll pull to that area. Then when I want to go backwards uh, or widen it all the way out, I can just hit a one X, and it'll bring me all the way wide from that spot. Uh, this also is a dial. So I can either come down here and move it this way, or this will, by holding down, dynamically move it any direction that I move inside here. So the farther I get out towards the edge, the faster it goes from that point. So that's kind of how you use your PTZs. Now, uh, since we're on the subject of Panto Zooms right now, if you're in the smaller square, everything still works. You can do your click. Uh, you can do your zoom in and zoom out manually, but you don't have the drag and square until you bring that up full frame. So now let's look at that playback by going to our quick playback and hitting go to last. This shows us what was last recorded. So you can see here our uh, resolution is exactly the same on playback. And now I can skip back. Uh, you'll see here my skip time I've set at 30 seconds. I can go to one minute all the way to 60 minutes. And this is just going to skip me back in time. So now uh, we're watching that playback uh, from there, and there's where I was started to play with uh, 
moving the actual camera around from that spot. Um, so that's a really quick way to do uh, playback from a, from a camera. You also have your go-to date. If you need to go farther back in time, you can pick a time and date, uh, and you can go back to that area. It will always find you the closest recording that you have to the time that you chose. Uh, again, mine are on motion, so uh, they're usually not recording. By hitting stop, uh, I go back to live video. So this up here in the corner always shows you whether you're doing live or playback. So again, if I click go to laugh, then you'll see that now it's telling me I'm in that playback mode. Uh, so I can rewind, fast forward, and all of that, and then hit stop. So here's the search. Now, this is, uh, does confuse people at times. This search is what gets populated after you do an actual search. So, for example, if I come to my search up top here and I pick uh, my front door, I can choose my front door, and then I can say to it, okay, I want to see uh, what was happening on this. Now, this is set for motion detection, and I can tell it from today, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., and hit OK. Now, it's only searching for this front door. I could choose others. Uh, I could search the groups that you already had pre-set up um, and all of that. I can also search any cameras that I have on preset maps. So now it brings back everything that's uh, set off motion detection today uh, from, that, uh, from that area that's coming in, and then it's showing me all my manual recordings, too, that I had set. So once I click this, it's going to bring all of that back across over here. So now those are all those search results. So now I can just quickly click through and find what it is uh, that I want at any one given time. Uh, and I'll go out here and set off a motion uh, so we have uh, me moving around on it here. But that's how we'll bring that uh, up from that area. Download we're going to get to in a second uh, off of these playbacks, but this alarm log is the alarms that are coming in from the cameras. So for example, uh, let me throw up the actual megapixel camera, and I'll throw on this NW502, which is in my office. Now, these two cameras, I've got them linked together so that when I push a button, it triggers the alarm on the camera, and then it sends the PTZ to that area and starts it recording. So I'm going to turn off my manual recording here. So now you can see these two cameras aren't recording at this point. Once I fire this alarm, this camera is going to record. It's also going to tell this other camera to go to that preset, and then it will record as well. And that way, you can do some downloads. So now it spins around. Uh, that's the alarm contact I have in the door. And now the alarm has been reported to the copy. So if we look down here in the right, we can see that our alarms have come in uh, from the cameras and that. Now, at any time, you can either hit live or hit playback to see what was recorded on that. Uh, and those also get stored in this alarm log so that we can do that even if it was tomorrow that we came back. So we can come in here, and now we can see uh, just by clicking on them the alarms that we had. So if this was what I wanted to download, I can either – let's get back a little bit here. I can come in here do a right click, and then just hit download. The minute I do that, it knows what recorder and what camera that, that I'm interested in is on, so it marks my time here. So now all I have to do is limit the other half of the time, the end time. So we'll limit this down to – let's take this down to 14. And we'll just grab till, let's go to 47. So from this point here, now it wants to know if I need the viewer player. I already have it on my computer, but it's always there for you to download it. And if this was recording audio, I could download that audio as well. There's an SD memory card in it. 
uh, I could pull that memory uh, off as a download as well. So now that I've got my parameters, I've got my camera, and I know what I want to download, I'm just going to click download over here, and we're just going to throw it into my desktop folder here. So now it comes across, and it's going to give us an OK that we have that video, and now we'll jump to my desktop here, and we'll see that file with that video. So if I come over here, and let me find it. Here we go. And I think it was six that we pulled down. So now here's my video, uh, and I'll hide this. You can see I've got the same quality here as well. Uh, and then from here I can pause. Uh, I can go backwards. It works basically like a VCR from this point. So uh, all of that is off now, and obviously this I have forever. So let me restore this down and get back to our copy. So all of that is possible from that area right there, and you'll, all your alarms will be reported in. So I've got alarms from motion to the contacts that are coming in, terminal alarms. They're all being reported to this. If you have these two on here as well, they will show you what goes on on your system. You can see here there's certain cameras I turn off after demos. So they report in that they've lost communication to the recorders. And then this is my network log, which shows what's going on on the network. So up top, a lot of times people look at all this. Uh, most of these are duplicated depending on what it is you like to do. So if I have this camera here, you'll notice if I do a right click, I can do a save as a JPEG, or I can just print off this picture right here either live or playback. That is the same thing as if I clicked here, get a print, and it's the same thing as if I came into the file uh, and did a print. So all of that's available um, right from the screen. If I want to digitally move in uh, on a picture, I can digitally zoom in, and then I can just move around from that point. Uh, I can do that on playback as well. So that is uh, how you use a lot of these buttons up here. Your views, if you want to get rid of uh, some of the stuff on the screen because you're just going to watch from that area to bring those back, just click back onto them, and then they'll bring those areas back for you. Uh, this is that search. You'll see you also have the same search button here uh, to get to the, uh, to the playback image. If you're not using motion detection, uh, it's usually quicker just to go to the date uh, and the time that you think the occurrence happened because there's really nothing that's going to be limited in the search. This, uh, if we jump down to this row here, uh, log out, uh, this is something to be careful of. You'll notice that this says uh, desired uh, display in a selected area, and this is saying that you're going to have one screen. So notice the little blue around here, and then it's highlighted. I'm telling this copy that I want to be able to choose a square and then put a camera <laughs> into that square. If I have this highlighted as display on one, whatever camera I choose, it's going to go full screen. So at this point, I'm bringing things up to full screen. So just be aware of that, that if you want to do the multiple displays and choose, you want to have this highlighted over here. So then I just move across. I'm a quad. These are my different quads I have in here uh, to the nine screen, and then out to I want 16 cells. So let me throw a group up here so we can do this next one. If I throw on the, six, the group that I have of all my cameras, then I can click this screen, and it brings me to full screen and fills the screen up for me. To exit, just do a right click, and that will pull us back out. Uh, and then this is, again, that search button again. And then the last thing that people will see is a file conversion. This takes your file so that if you want to give it to somebody and don't want it court admissible, you can just do your file conversion. Uh, let me go to my desktop. We could grab that same uh, download that we did from the camera. 
it asks us where we want that output because we're going to change this to an MP4. So I'm just going to choose my same file here. Hit OK, and then it wants to know the size. So we can keep that full resolution, but it will take it longer to obviously convert that because we have more data to convert. And then I can keep my audio and uh, keep my file chain on it uh, to show that no one's uh, changed it. So from here I can hit Start, and now this progressor will just change green, and when it's done it will be solid and it will say completed. So I'm going to shrink that down for time. You can see here just as it's converting it right now. The last uh, is uh, you can do audio as well. So if your audio is turned on, I've got this camera here. It has to be in the first cell. So uh, you'll see I have no audio button uh, popping up here. Once I bring this either full frame, I can see audio here. Or if I have a quad and I leave that or put that into this first cell here, then my audio button comes back. So let me, uh, let me plug an iPod in here and uh, just kind of give you an example of how you turn your audio on and off here. So let's just plug this in. Kind of my audio a little bit, so let me uh, let me get that call down here. Find something to play. Okay. So now that I got my audio down, uh, I'm not overdriving it. You can hear that uh, I can stop that audio from playing live. And then again, if I go to the quick playback and hit go to last, then uh, we'll hear that audio. So obviously you can hear there where I switched the song. Uh, the same thing applies if I bring this up full frame. Um, then I can come in here, do my uh, right click, and then uh, hit my download. And now I would be able to download the audio as well uh, from this camera. So at that point, uh, you'll get your two files. The one file will be the audio. And then the second file will be the, uh, the video that comes off of it as well. So let's just pull a little bit of this so we can see that. Let's just go to 36. And do that download. So this time I'll put it in this audio file. I just do that because that's how I have them labeled. But there's your two files. <laughs> so if you have audio, you could convert that. Uh, to an MP4 as well, and then your audio will play uh, back on your playback as well. So if we jump over to uh, jump over to here, oops, wrong file. Let's come in here and go to the audio, and I think it's this one. That's the other page. That's an alarm that came in. Pops it up full screen. But here's your audio from the actual playback. So uh, you can see that you can pull your audio across as well. And uh, those are uh, all the major buttons on the uh, ASM 200. Uh, it does have more advanced uh, copy license as well. But for the sake of time, we just wanted to go through the the general buttons of uh, what it is you'll be using uh, on the page. Thank you very much.